thinking of going back to the office? Hold up. Do you want to know what happens when someone sitting at the desk opposite from you coughs? This simulation is about to show you exactly where the particles go. Trust me, it's disgusting. Watch this. Across Japan, people are learning to live with this virus. The streets are busy, and Japan's residents are doing their best to manage the stifling summertime humidity. Things are starting to look like normal. But look a little closer. At least half a million times closer. These are the molecules that fill the air. Every breath we take contains 25 sextillion of them. Some of these make up tiny particles, things like dust and pollen blown around by the wind. Some are things like pollutants from car exhausts and smoke. And then, of course, there's viruses. And that's just one breath. Imagine how many there are in this intersection. Or your office. Or the train. Now this country, famous for its technology, is trying to map tiny, near invisible particles to help understand how the coronavirus spreads. And to do it, they're using the fastest computer ever made. Meet Fugaku. On the outside, the Riken Center for Computational Science in Western Japan doesn't look like much, but inside is a computer that's almost three times more powerful than any other computer the world has ever seen. It combines the power of nearly 160,000 processing units and can perform in a few days tasks that would have taken its older Japanese predecessor, K, an entire year. <laughs> The problem of droplets and the virus is you can't see it. So people worry or think things are okay without any evidence. I think it's important to make the virus visible. Fugaku has been brought online a year ahead of schedule, harnessing that incredible speed in our fight against coronavirus. It's already identifying how those tiny virus droplets move and spread in all kinds of circumstances. For locations like here in the office, the computer is already coming up with real-world simulations of how the virus travels through the air. Here's a pretty normal office setup where the partition between desks is 120 centimetres high. When someone coughs in this situation, some of the particles hit the partition, but almost half don't. But look what happens when you raise the partition by just 20 centimetres. Now the partition is 140 centimetres high. When the simulation is run again, almost all the particles coat the partition. Those that don't are dispersed higher and away from other people. Companies in Japan are already heeding this advice. But you can also go too high. If you make it too high, like 1.6 metres, it reduces the ventilation capacity in the room. It creates a situation where aerosols can stick around for a long time when a person coughs. It's rush hour here in Tokyo this morning and keeping your social distance isn't always easy. Scientists also modelled Japan's notoriously packed public transport system and have suggested changes to make travelling safer. We're heading in to the Yamanota train line. This is one of the busiest lines in Tokyo and often running well above capacity. Here's what a carriage is like when that happens. The green lines represent good airflow. The red lines show stagnant air. Between the passengers, the air has almost nowhere to go. But Fugaku's simulations show having fewer passengers and opening windows can increase ventilation by up to two to three times. If there are 230 people on a crowded train where the capacity is 160, there's only about six cubic metres of fresh air that one person can use in an hour. 
With the power of more than 20 million smartphones, the supercomputer is simulating the virus and also searching for drugs that might be able to fight the symptoms of it, digging through a database of more than 2,000 potential treatments. It's found some promising results already. The computer compares existing medications with everything we know about COVID-19, looking for any matches or similarities. Researchers looked at everything from anti-cancer agents to common cold medicine and simulated how they could bind to proteins unique to the virus and then looked into how the drugs worked in the body on the molecular level. We're hoping to accelerate uh, the clinical trials such so that there will be um, uh, effective COVID-19 treatment drugs that are very cheap, very abundant, and side effect free. In the absence of a vaccine or even a proven treatment, revealing and predicting how the invisible virus can spread is a crucial step in the fight to contain COVID and help society return one step closer to normality.